Hi, I'm Andy Citrin. I work with the IBM's WebSphere Portal Performance Group. We use Rational Performance Tester to simulate thousands of users making requests against our servers. Over the years, I've worked very closely with the Rational Performance Tester developers to get features added to the product that we need, that my group needs and uses. And I spent a fair amount of time showing people how to use RPT. And I decided it was worth my time to put some video tutorials together. Rational Performance Tester is a test tool that's used to simulate thousands of users making requests. Uh, usually HTTP requests, but other protocols are supported. These talks are going to focus on HTTP web traffic. Now the method of using RPT is to record a script, edit it, to turn it into a test that can be run by thousands of simulated users. Scripts can usually not be played back as recorded. You have to modify the script to make it so that you can play it back. A simulated user is also known as a virtual user or a V-user. You take a script or a set of scripts and you put them into a schedule. The schedule controls the set of scripts that make up the workload. The schedule also parcels out the workload to a set of agents who actually simulate the load. The components that you use with Rational Performance Tester are the workbench, and that's used for script development. It controls the execution of a schedule. It also monitors resources such as CPU and disk, and it analyzes the data, which you can do during a run or after the run. Another component is the RPT agent. It takes many agents to generate the workload, simulating thousands of users. Now, a typical test setup would include the RPT workbench, which I'm showing at the top of the screen, and it connects to a set of RPT agents which generate the workload and those RPT agents will make requests against a web server or an app server and that app server or web server typically has some back-end resources such as an LDAP or a database. Now the RPT workbench can communicate to the agents over a public network in other words, there's no response time characteristics that really matter. So you, it doesn't matter what other traffic is going on on the network. The workbench can also monitor the systems under test, the, the app server and LDAP and database over the public network. However, the agents should typically communicate over a private network to the web server. And the the web server or app server should also talk over a private network to the backend LDAP and database server. And the reason for that is that you want predictable and repeatable results. And if you're running over a public network where someone could be streaming an MP3 from from a you know from from a music server, you don't want unexplained traffic on your private network while you're running a test because that way it allows you to get repeatable results. So it's best to run over private network from the agents to the, the web server. The set of talks that I put together or the topics that I'm going to be covering in this course are first of all setting up RPT how to download it, install it, and some things about licensing and how to upgrade to the latest fix pack. In the second talk, I'll be talking about using RPT for the first time, creating a new workspace, importing a product activation license, creating a performance test project using the test navigator and creating folders for the project. In the third lecture, I'll be talking about creating a runnable script from a recording references and substitutions. In the fourth talk I'll be talking about RPT variables and built-in functions. 
In the fifth talk, I'll be talking about custom code. In the sixth talk, I'll be talking about script editing, creating reusable script fragments, and merging more than one request into one. Sometimes you need to do that. In the seventh talk, I'll be talking about schedules, importing them, creating your own schedule, and some schedule options. Eighth talk, I'll be talking about running a schedule from the workbench or from the command line and how to monitor a run in progress. Ninth talk, I'll be talking about examining results, the test log, views and reports, and customizing a report. And in the tenth talk, I'll be talking about opening an RPT PMR. A couple of advanced topics that I hope to get around to covering are script editing and rules. Script editing is useful when the product that you're testing changes over time and you don't want to spend the time re-scripting everything from scratch and making the script work again, And but you just need to change a couple of things. So there are some nice tricks that you can do to make life simpler so you don't have to re-record everything from scratch. And rules I do cover a bit in these talks, but I don't go into a whole lot of depth, so I'll go into some depth with that talk. If you're familiar with RPT, you don't have to listen to all of these talks in order. You can skip directly to the talk that is relevant to what you want to learn about. If you're not familiar with it, then you can use the set of talks as a set of tutorials and listen to them in order. Okay, so let's get started.